We want to welcome all of His Glory Nation from east to west to north to south as we bring you our latest teaching in the book of Esther. Tonight we will bring you Esther 7, and this has to do with uh, the, the second banquet that Esther is preparing for uh, the king and Haman. This is where the cat will be let out of the bag, so to speak, uh, Haman's Last Supper, if you shall. And uh, before we go any further, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down from east to west to north to south to be our true teacher in the Word of God here in Esther 7. This is going to be Esther Stan as a Jewish queen. She's going to let the king know that she is of Jewish and what Haman's uh, demonic plans are through Satan, literally, to wipe out the nation of Israel. And that's just like Satan. He's always trying to wipe out the nation of Israel with hatred. That's why Israel is, is, is hated because of God, the true God, Elohim's love for his people and his redemption and his everlasting covenant to David and his ever, everlasting covenant to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Satan wants to destroy that. He wants to destroy that line here in Esther so that the Messiah couldn't be redeemed, our King of Kings and Lord of Hosts. And that's exactly what he tried to do with the Nazis when they killed six million Jews in a horrible, horrible Holocaust. And uh, I'm uh, part Jewish myself from the, line, you know, uh, the tribe of Judah. And uh, I had relatives there. And my wife had relatives there. And uh, it's just horrific. But God will deal with evil once and for all. And love overcomes, uh, overcomes hate, which we're going to see. What, God, what, what Satan meant for destruction... God is going to turn the tables, literally. We're going to see that here in Esther 7. So here we go. So the king, and so we remember in 6, Haman was caught off guard. These things are starting to spiral out of control. He didn't have time to uh, plan this, uh, all this stuff that is going against him. Uh, he was forced to put Mordecai on a horse and give him, uh, let him ride through as a reward for saving the king. And now things start to spiral out of control, and they're out of control. And when God has it, and you're trying to go against the Most High God, he, it's going to spiral out of control real quickly because God has all things. So the king and Haman went to dine with Queen Esther. Now this is the second day. So queen, the queen has planned this absolutely perfectly on God's timing. And he is, she is going to lay the hammer down, if you will. On the second day of the banquet of the wine, the king again said to Esther, What is your petition? This was common, again, uh, to Queen Esther to give up to half of, 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 their, uh, uh, of their kingdom. So remember, Herod did the same thing when uh, they wanted the head of John the Baptist. It shall be granted to you, and what is your request? Up to half the kingdom, and shall be done. So whatever you want, Esther, up to half the kingdom. That's pretty bold. Uh, that's a pretty big um, uh, ask, if you will. Then Queen Esther answered and said, If I have found favor in your sight, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given, uh, given me at my petition and my people at my request. What is she talking about? My, my life? Why is her life in jeopardy and her people? She's going to tell him that he's, she's Jewish. And, and, and that this wicked Haman is trying to destroy her and all the Jewish people. For we have sold my people and I to be destroyed, to be killed, and to be annihilated. Had we been sold as a male and female slaves, I would have held my tongue although the enemy could never compensate for the king's loss. So the king, the enemy would never compensate if we were just as slaves because that would be very valuable. He's, she's saying, I held my tongue if it was just slaves. But th this is more. This, they want, she, he wants to destroy the entire line of the Hebrews, the whole Jewish state, as Hitler tried to do himself with this obnoxious hatred that can only be funneled and fueled by Satan himself in his demonic realm because he knows God's anointed comes through the nation of Israel. And the Messiah, the Mashiach Nakik, the Messiah, the King, will be in the line of David. And God has an everlasting covenant to David and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, as Luke tells us. Mary, blessed one, you, you are, uh, son of God, you, you'll have the Son of God, and you'll be uh, the Father David, will, will rule over the house of David and rule over the house of Judah forever. And when God says forever, he means forever. So she's stepping up, putting everything on the line, not holding her tongue back, because Mordecai said that Lord put you in a place at this time and place for a perfect reason. That's how God uses us. God uses us for this perfect timing, perfect place if our heart is ready to, to, to go up and stand up for his purpose and his glory. And as Mordecai told her, if you don't do it, Esther, somebody else will. 
So if we don't do what the Lord wants us to do, God's going to get his, going to get his job done. He's going to use somebody that has a willing heart that loves him. As Isaiah said, here I am, Lord, send me. And Isaiah 6, here I am, here I am, send me, Lord. And that's the type of, that's the type of servant we need to be. Here I am, Lord, use me. Verse 5, so King Asahiris answered and said to Queen Esther, who is he and where is he? Who would dare presume in, presume in his heart to do such a thing? So the king was sideswiped by this knucklehead Haman to sign this decree and, 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 and was, uh, uh, was fooled and, and gave him the power to do that. So when you're signing a document, you better make sure that you're signing it and, you, and the trust, uh, you just don't give the trust blindly uh, because he ha had no idea that it was going to wipe out the nation of, of the Jewish people. Verse 7, then the king arose in his wrath from the banquet of wine. He was upset. He was fired. You're going against my wife. You're going against this, these people. And the Lord put the timing. Everything was perfectly timed by the Lord. The Lord had everything perfect to get him his, his reaction and everything just in line. Absolutely perfect. As Jesus said in Matthew 5, 17, I didn't come to replace the law and the prophets. I came to fulfill it to every yacht and tittle. Yacht and tittle, the smallest blemish in the Hebrew, uh, in the Hebrew alphabet. Literally, every dot was fought, put in perfect sequence from the Lord and the motions and everything perfect for, for him to get his purpose done. So the place in uh, the banquet of wine and went into the, the palace garden, but Haman stood before Queen Esther. He knew the gig was up. He knew he was in huge trouble because he saw the anger of the king and he was so mad. He ran, he ran out and, and Haman said, I'm done. I'm done. My only desperate act is to fall on my knees towards the queen and beg for her to, to, to uh, um, forgive me and let this go. And that's good. what he does is going to make it look worse in the eyes of the king. So queen pleading for his life, for he saw that the evil was determined against him by the king. The king was going to wax him. When the king returned from the palace garden to the place of the banquet, Haman had fallen across the couch where Esther was. So it looked like he was either making a play of some sort against her, and that made it worse. That was putting gasoline on the fire. Then the king said, will he also assault the queen while I'm, uh, I'm in the house? How dare you to assault my wife? How dare you when I go out to the garden, you're, you're across the couch going after her. Whatever, the, whatever your intent was, it, it's not looking good, and uh, I, have, I, I, I have determined your, your fate. Your fate is going to be gone. And actually, the determination of the fate was done by the Lord Most High. And he's going to use the term in the Torah, the eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, because he'll go to a tree. He'll be hung. He will also assault the queen in my house. As the word left the king's mouth, they, they, they covered Haman's face. So they covered his face in shame. Now, Harabah, one of the eunuchs, said to the king, look, so just so happens, he says, look, there's gallows. Gallows in, in, in the Hebrew means tree. So it's showing a tree. And again, it was in, the, in Nazi Germany that there were 10, uh, 10 of the worst of the worst of the Nazis that uh, killed 6 million Jews were hung uh, in a, 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 like sign, a, a like manner. God is always using history to repeat itself in his, his uh, prophetic cycles. And now uh, th there's gallows. They're 50 cubit high. Remember, we were talking about that. It was about 70 foot, 75 foot high tree, cross, if you will. And that's what it means, be hung in a tree. And the king's behalf is standing in the house of Haman. Um, the, uh, then the king said, hang him on it, put him on that tree. So eye for an eye, uh, uh, tooth for a tooth. So they hung Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the king's wrath subsided. So he put the, the gallows up, the tree up to hang a Jew, a hang Mordecai, who loved the Lord with all his heart, his soul, and his mind. And he was stood up for the right things of the Lord. And God turned that away and, and put Haman what was intended for Mordecai put Haman on that cross. He put Haman on that tree, just like our Messiah went to the tree. As David said in Psalm 22, talking about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ that would come from his loins, come from his line. David talked about crucifixion a thousand years before the Medes and Persians even invented it. So we hear, we see Asahiris is the, is the king of the Medes and Persians. So this is the, these are the ones that invented the cross. This is the crucifixion that they're talking about. And it's just like the tree. When Christ went to the tree, there was three on the tree. The one that in the middle was supposed to be uh, Barabbas, son of your father, was a pun, son of the father of the devil. These three men that were on the tree were of the wicked of wicked. They were evil. So their sin was taking them to the cross. 
uh, from a uh, from from a uh, uh, the second sin nature, the death, death of sin, because they didn't accept the Lord uh, Most High, and Jesus literally took the place of Barabbas, took the place on the cross for us, so that our sins could be released once and for all if we gave up our heart and our soul to Him. So He was a replacement and make Him Lord of our life. We have eternal life through that based on our heart condition. Do we repent of our sins and accept Christ for what he did? That intercession to take Barabbas' spot, but more important, to take our spiritual spot for eternal life. And out of the two wicked, we learn a lesson. One went to the lake of, or went to Sheol, the, the cross on the left, or the, the thief on the left. He didn't. He went around cursing Jesus Christ the most high. And the one on the right said, you're certainly you're the Messiah. Remember me today in paradise. And he had redemption. And the last second, a thief on the cross. And when you are a thief on the cross, you're the worst of the worst. He humbled himself and sought the face of the Messiah. So it shows you a glimpse of many things here. That we, the second death is based on the condition of one's heart and denying the Christ. And that Christ took the cross for us, our sins past, present, and future. But if we deny the Christ in a hardened heart, the cross will be the second death, as it is with Haman. What God intended, what Haman intended for Mordecai, it turned the tables right on him because of the condition of his heart. And Christ went into that center cross for each and every one that's ever born to take our place. And all we have to do is as simple as a child say, Thank you, Lord. You are my Lord. You are my King of Kings, Lord of hosts. Forgive me of my sins. I repent. And I want to follow your way and I'll make you with Kairos in my life. If you prayed that in your heart, you meant that. You have eternal life with the King of Kings and the Lord of hosts. So even if you're the thief on the cross on the right and you humbled yourself at the last second, no matter what you've done, the sins have been washed away and you're in with him for eternity based on the heart and speaking it out to him. Or you become the thief on the, the, thief on the cross on the left who died the second death with a hardened heart heart away from the Lord. We pray that Esther 7 has been a blessing to you and to know that the Lord Most High has all things in his hands. And if you seek his face with your heart, your, his, your, with your heart, your soul, and your mind, he will reveal all things to you and he will number the hairs on your head as the scripture says. He's got it. We just have to trust in him in all things. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Esther bless you today and always. God bless you.